Hello everyone, this is Zook and this is going to be part one of a two-part video where I design a logo for Husky Starcraft thing which I mentioned in a previous video. In case you didn't know, Husky Starcraft is a Starcraft 2 commentator and uh, one of the owners of TGS which basically owns us all. And he needs a logo desperately because in absence of one he can't really do much of anything in terms of branding. So it was tasked to me to come up with it. Now this isn't it. This isn't the one I made. Um, I was given this concept, which was designed by a guy called Crisscross Media, whose channel you will find in the description. Sorry, <laughs> can't really help that one. And um, yeah, I was just asked to improve it and simplify it. Now, I'm going to get into a bit of philosophy regarding this because I think it's important. Basically, he wanted a logo that was a hybrid between a logo and a mascot. See, the thing with the mascot is a lot of companies do use it, even like corporate stuff. Uh, you know, like website hosting uh, or server hosting agencies and all that stuff. So it's fine. When you use a mascot, you create uh, something easier to identify in terms of branding. But logos are meant to be used in a variety of circumstances, on business cards, on very small sizes. So the key parts of a logo is readability and legibility, really. So it has to be very readable and identifiable as a, at a very small size. So it's kind of challenging coming up with a hybrid between a logo and a mascot because a logo is uh, defined by its simplicity. Like, of course, some people design a lot of complex logos with very many swirls and all bunch of shapes and stuff. But those will only be used most of the time either in on T-shirts or on websites, and that's fine. Uh, once you start printing that, then it becomes a bit more complicated or using it as avatar or something like that. So he wanted something that he could use as an avatar, as an actual logo, to put on a t-shirt. So basically all uses, all possible uses. Who knows, maybe even a business card at some point. So I, I took this concept and I'm going to point out what's wrong with it in the first place so people will know why I went my way instead of just going with something like this. Basically, the deal with this is the, the lines are very jaggy. Now, I'm personally not a fan of that. That style is used by some, and it is used in certain cartoons with jagged lines and very awkward-looking uh, angles and uh, points. So that's cool. But I don't think that it's good to use when, when it comes to logos. So also, the perspective on the ears is off. Like, the, the ear in the back is much more in front than it should be, since this is supposed to be a side view. The eye is very simple. It's it's too simple, actually. And what I personally don't like about it is that it has no lines. It, I, I'm a big fan of using thick, very easily visible lines when you design a logo, and this doesn't. There are two kind of, kinds of styles that you can approach, like either full color with no lines or very thick lines, which is what I'm going to do. So that's just my personal preference. I mean, there are some people that might like this one, but I just don't think it's right for the purpose. A lot of angles are off. A lot of the line work is very shaky, and I personally don't like that. So what I did was retrace it and um, come up with my own version of it. Now, this logo is meant to define uh, certain aspects of his personality, I imagine. I've had a lot of experience working with clients that basically refuse to accept when you present them something and instead want their own idea plugged in, which a lot of times is actually stupid. Now, this isn't really the case here, but I'm just saying from experience, you know, as a designer, it's your responsibility to create something that matches the personality of the of the client. For example, if you're making a logo for a Girl Scout cookie selling uh, business, you're not going to make like a demon face with bloody fangs, or you're not going to make uh, something that's very corporate, very cold, very impersonal. It has to be something quirky, something fun, something that, you know, gives you, puts you in a good mood, not something that scares you or, um, you know, gives you a sense of fear or foreboding or something. Also, at the same time, if you work for a very serious type company, like a, maybe an insurance agency or a bank, it has to be something very cold, very simple and very uh, impersonal. Like it can't be a funny looking gorilla with glasses holding up money or something like that. That's usually not good. And if you do that, you won't get taken seriously. Like the, the whole point of a company like that is to be taken seriously. That's what they're going for. But in this case, you know, it's something that's, you know, a bit jovial, something that's not so formal and that's fine. So I, I kind of like working with that sort of client because it allows me more freedom than just, you know, thinking cold and, uh, coming up with something that's very sharp and very, like, scary and corporate. I usually don't like that, but I'll do it anyway. And as long as I get paid, I don't <laughs> really care. So this wolf, you know, it's, it's somewhat aggressive, but it's not very aggressive. Um, 
I'm thinking in terms of what Husky does, which is casting StarCraft 2. I mean, StarCraft is a competitive sport. And in sports, a lot of times, if you see like football team logos and all that, a lot of them are very aggressive, like Panthers. Anything involving an animal is usually kind of, it's given an aggressive uh, stance because, you know, it's competition. It's supposed to lead you to, uh, you know, adrenaline, thinking of adrenaline and what players go through and all that. So, yes, StarCraft is, in fact, esports. So, I personally think that a guy that casts it and has a certain presence in the scene should have a similar logo to this one. So I'm what I'm doing is tracing the logo and giving it a comic style, uh, comic book style look, trying to keep as many features as I can, trying to make him as easily readable as I can, but at the same time simplifying the logo as much as I can. Like the point is for this logo to be readable at a size of like 50 pixels or 30 pixels or even 16, but I wouldn't go as far like. Usually 32 is as little as one one goes with uh, logo size, but it won't really be the case unless he decides to make a website and use it as a one of those website thumbnail thingies at the in the search bar. It will probably work in that case anyway. So the point of this is to be enclosed in a square, but the square is really boring. So um, I'm gonna try to use a different shape for it, but that's gonna be part two where I actually trace it in Illustrator. This is gonna strictly be the the hand drawn part of it. So uh, I oftentimes just start logos at drawing them by hand because I think it's it goes much quicker. Some people prefer a tablet. Some people prefer uh, doing it straight away in Illustrator. I just think that, you know, having a lot of tools and a lot of ways to get different shapes, it in the end, it makes more sense to, to have a clean hand-drawn version and then go from there. So that's what I'm trying to do. Usually when I design something, I make something as clean as possible, as well-defined as possible, as close to the final version as possible, scan it in, uh, adjust the levels, clean it up, present it to the person that, to the client, get the approval from them, and then go from there and improve it as I go. So this is going to be the same case here. That's why I'm actually defining all of the curves, making them really clean using the Bezier curve. That's I think that's what it's called to get uh, you know perfectly straight. Well, not straight, but perfectly smooth curves. It's a really good tool to use. I mean, I love those. Uh, so then I'm going to scan this in Photoshop, clean it up, present it to Husky, see if he has any final changes, because this isn't the first version of it. I've done like two two or three versions of this previously, but I do it from scratch every time just to add or remove some more things that I didn't really like or that he didn't really like. So this should technically be the final version, but I'm not sure. You never know with people. I always think of extra stuff. So after he gives the final OK with it, I'm going to make a second part where I... Uh, trace it in Illustrator, make the coloring, whatever coloring is necessary, make a few versions, put it on a shirt maybe just to see what it looks like, uh, put it on a business card or put it on a website template or something like that just to give uh, Husky an idea of what it would look like in those uh, situations. So thank you for watching and I think I'm going to stop here. Basically this this looks pretty good to me. I, I really like how it came out. It's a bit more aggressive than the than the original concept, but in the good way. I mean, it's not like super scary. You know, it's not like monstrous. I could have made it monstrous. The way to make things more monstrous is to use sharper angles, accentuated features like a really, really thick, heavy lower jaw, slap some fangs on it. You know, there are plenty of ways to make something cute into something monstrous. But I think for now, it's a good kind of a good balance between... Uh, uh, being aggressive and being funny looking and cartoony. So I think that's okay. So yes, thanks again for watching and please rate that shit. Video part two will come uh, rather soon after he gives the final okay. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.